Hey everyone, um, I want to talk about an extremely important issue. Extremely important. Um, I believe one of the most important issues of our time, and that is media power and accountability. It directly, directly relates to the issues I'm going to be discussing. Um, I've talked about this before, Donald Trump's uh, very rocky relations with the media. Um, if you look at my channel, you'll see videos where I'm very critical of Trump. So in no way am I coming from this from uh, being some sort of, um, you know, Jewy Trump fan. Um, really not. And uh, until the last American election in November, I, I, I kind of felt okay about CNN. I never had strong views about it, but I started paying a little bit more attention on how they covered the election, and I think it was completely, well, frankly, a disgrace, the sheer level of bias that they showed. Now, um, I'm going to talk about two cases uh, that sort of relate to this point. First of all, um, President Trump was addressing um, a CIA memorial today, um, and he initially started, I watched a speech, he started by... Um, Basically, he spoke about himself a lot. Um, now, I do think that was inappropriate because, firstly, he went there to mend relations with the security services. Ostensibly, that was a reason for going. Um, he did also acknowledge that there was a plaque or, or there were stars behind him. I think it was 117 stars, which is for um, security personnel who have died in the line of duty. So... As CNN described, it's the CIA's closest equivalent to Arlington National Cemetery, a very poignant and um, and sacred place in that sense. Um, and in typical Trump fashion, he did talk a lot about himself. There's no way to escape that. He spent a good bit of time talking about um, the number of people at his inauguration and attacking CNN for spinning it in a certain way and so on. Um, I think that was just the wrong place to do it. Um, so from that point of view, I think it was a bit ridiculous, childish and out of place. He did praise the security services um, and he did say we're going to defeat ISIS and so on. But I think the self-congratulatory rhetoric, you know, it's typical Trump, but it can, it would be better for somewhere else. However... I looked at uh, the the way the CNN panel was discussing it afterwards. Now, on one hand, I agree with what they were saying about it being in a, inappropriate in that place, and that Trump is um, is very sort of self centered the way he talks about himself a lot, the way he talks about his ratings, and the way he talks about the number of people who are supporting him and so on. Trump, in that sense, can seem very pompous. But Trump did attack the media in his speech. Now, whether it was the right place to do it or not, let's put that aside for a second. He was attacking media bias, and he was attacking um, the issue with the Martin Luther King bust versus the Churchill bust. Um, CNN, apparently, or one of the networks critical of Trump, has presented that as... Trump being against Martin Luther King. It's quite a big thing in Britain, actually, because obviously Churchill was our wartime leader um, and it was a bit of a controversy when Obama removed it. Personally, I, I think people are reading too much into it either way. But the fact is both Churchill and Martin Luther King were very important historic figures. I really don't think that um, an African-American president having a bust of a revered civil rights leader is any big deal. I think that's totally understandable. I mean, as a Briton, I don't take it as a, an offence that Obama took the Churchill bust away. It's not like he threw it in the bin or something. He just uh, presumably put it in another spot. So I think people can read too much into that. But anyway, the point Trump was making was they when, when Trump brought back the Churchill bust, there are some who are spinning that as being against Martin Luther King, which, of course, is absurd. Um, you know, presidents change things around all the time. It's not it's not that big a deal. Um, when a new president moves in, they always change some of the interior. I really don't think it's such a big deal. But there is a track record of CNN, especially the other networks, but especially CNN, 
trying to find an anti-Trump spin on absolutely everything. I'm not saying the bus story with CNN, but I'm just making the point that there is a track record of this. Now, the CNN panel were basically sitting around there, about seven of them, and I appreciate they all have different roles. Some of them might not be directly connected to CNN, but a lot of CNN people there, and they were basically wallowing in self-pity. Dana Bash said, oh, it's very easy to attack the media, and it's been happening throughout the history of our republic. But what she didn't say was the media is extremely powerful. And I do think that Donald Trump has latched onto something. And I'll just give another example before I um, explain what I'm talking about in that sense. The other example is Nancy Sinatra. Well, apparently she made a joking tweet uh, that the last line of her father's song, My Way, was, um, I think it was the end of the world or something like that. Anyway, she made a joke on Twitter that was clearly meant to be um, not taken very seriously. Uh, personally, I think Twitter's become a liability because people scrutinise every single thing they say. But um, CNN basically took that to be her protesting about Donald Trump using her father's song at his inauguration ball at the Liberty Ball. Um, I watched the dance, actually. It's a nice song. It's a crooner classic. Um, apparently, Trump likes the song. So I, I really don't see the controversy. As for Nancy Sinatra, well, she has actually said she wants Donald Trump to do well. Now, I don't know if she's a Trump supporter or not. I don't know if she's voted for Trump or not. I don't think she did. But the point is, CNN clearly distorted that. Now, to be fair, she didn't entirely help her own case by deleting the tweet. Um, and she also said that she didn't mean it that way. CNN, why do you lie? It's it's not so much a lie as distortion. But the problem is when you distort enough times, it influences how people think. So it's just yet another little piece of ammo for CNN to attack Trump. Oh, look, um, Trump's being made a fool because the artist whose song he's using, the, the daughter of that artist is taking issue with it except that she didn't. So when a powerful media body like CNN turns every single report into an anti-Trump angle, it just becomes pathetic. Now, to be fair, it works both ways. When Obama was president, Fox News done that. They tried to turn every single thing into an anti-Obama angle. So these big networks, all of them, are guilty of industrial scale distortion. I know Bill O'Reilly likes to, you know, say he's telling it like it is and so on, but these shock jocks on Fox News are just as bad. The thing about CNN, the reason I focus more on CNN is because they have been in focus more recently um, for attacking Trump. Fox News is pro-Republican. They have less to say about Trump in that sense. I just think that, you know, when I see a panel sitting around and saying, oh, poor us, we're the poor media, stop picking on us. I'm thinking, well, wait a second, you're right to defend yourself, but you also have to take responsibility. And this is being presented as another fake story, which frankly, it is. If they're, if they're distorting what someone meant, what they should have done was made an article like um, Nancy Sinatra jokes about inaugural song, something like that. Not Nancy Sinatra is unhappy about the inaugural song. Now, people might think this is frivolous. And individually, any of these things would be rather frivolous. The problem is, when there's a long line of issues like this, and they all come together, well, frankly, Trump is onto something. And frankly, if the sheer arrogance of these big networks is curtailed just a little bit, that is not necessarily a bad thing. Because in dem democratic societies, we hold um, press freedom extremely highly, and we should, because the responsibility of the press, of big networks, is to hold powerful people to account. Donald Trump is a very powerful person. Of course, he should be held to account. And I, I don't go along the line that he's always taken out of context, because sometimes he digs himself right in it, and, you know, it comes from the horse's mouth. So I'm not saying that, but there is... in industrial scale distortion going on, not just on CNN, not just at Fox, at every big network. And I do think CNN has shown profound arrogance because they complain about the media being attacked, but they do nothing about it. 
They take no responsibility. So instead of saying, okay, why are people attacking us? They just get defensive and say, oh, stop attacking us. They need to step back a little bit and think, well, okay, maybe there is a perception that we are biased. Let's look at why. And the thing is, it's very subtle because it isn't all the time. So yesterday, for instance, their actual coverage of the inauguration was quite good. It wasn't particularly critical. It was balanced. But that is one of the few exceptions in recent months. Virtually the whole coverage during the campaign was negative. Um, you know, I'm not going to shoot the messenger. I am not going to attack a CNN journalist for saying uh, Donald Trump has upset a lot of people with this particular statement. Because that is a statement of fact. Trump is a controversial individual and he has said controversial things. But the media also need to understand that they are not above criticism. What Dan Abash said is is ignoring the fact that since certainly the 1960s, um, the media has arguably been far more powerful than any government. I mean, the power of mass media is immense. I think it was Lyndon Johnson turned around to a reporter in the mid-60s and said, you have changed everything. And this isn't just CNN or Fox. It's across the board. Because what editors do is they will take a sample of what someone has said and present that as the main theme. Now, I appreciate, let's say someone makes a long speech. I appreciate it is not practically possible to print out or recite the entire speech again. I understand that. Actually, one of the best sources for doing that is the Times newspaper. The Times will actually print out an entire speech. And some people might say that's tedious. I give them credit for that because it means that they are they they are showing the whole source. Um, just to contrast the C CNN with the BBC, the BBC has many, many faults, but at least the BBC replies to criticism. This is another big issue I take with CNN. You can go to their Facebook page and criticize them and they won't delete it, but they never respond to it. Now, to me, that's arrogance. That's basically saying, oh, well, people are criticizing us, but we don't care. We're going to just do our own thing anyway. You can't complain about being criticized and then not respond to what the criticism is. Think about that. They are being criticized for bias, for fake stories, but they're not actually taking any responsibility to change people's mind. They're doing absolutely nothing. They're just showing arrogance. And I think it's because for a very long time, they have been in a position of power. And now you have a president who's challenging that. Whether you like Trump or not, no one can say he's a stooge of the media. It's sort of ironic. It's taken a reality TV star to do this. I mean, you know, the Trump of a few years ago in The Apprentice, I, I would have, well, I still see that Trump as obnoxious and, you know, nasty, unpleasant. But the power of the media is such, maybe it does take, frankly, an alpha male like Trump to just stick up two fingers to them and say, no, you know, you need to be challenged. You need to be called out. Now, Obama showed remarkable patience with the onslaught of attacks that he faced from Fox News. Uh, Trump isn't doing that. Does that mean Obama had tougher skin? Possibly. But it could also mean that Trump is rewriting the script and saying this has to change. Now, to those who believe that Trump is a dictator, they're going to they're going to be looking at this from the angle of Trump's trying to control the media. But I sort of look at it from the angle of, well, the media is, is powerful. Arguably, there's a dictatorship of the media because they have the power to destroy someone in terms of reputation. They have that power. And for me, that's you can't get more powerful than that. I mean... It happens here in the UK too. Someone will make a statement about an issue and then it happens all the time with politicians. Now, to be fair, some politicians will use that as an excuse. They'll say, oh, I was taken out of context um, when they blatantly haven't been taken out of context because you can see a recording and that's exactly what they did say. So there are politicians who are liars as well and they've been caught out and they won't take responsibility for it. They'll just blame the media. So I'm not for a second saying, Everything is the fault of the media. What I am saying is the media is extremely powerful and they need to take some responsibility. 
and they need to be accountable. Because they will say it's our job to hold the powerful to account. My question is, well, okay, who holds the media to account? Who holds you to account? In the UK, we have something called Ofcom, which is a good concept because it's, um, it's basically a media watchdog. It enables people, if they feel that the media has betrayed them unfairly, or if they feel that a program has been biased or whatever, people can complain to that. I'm not sure if there's any American equivalent, and I think it is desperate that there needs to be some sort of independent watchdog in the United States that keeps a track on what these people do, because they, they're in such a vaulted position that they've actually convinced themselves that they're the victims, and that's preposterous. So my message to CNN, you're not victims, and if you really think you are, well then respond to the criticism directly. Don't just whinge about it. Don't just say, oh, Trump's picking on us. Actually address the specific points and respond to criticism. Don't take this holier-than-thou attitude and sit there. I mean, those panels, I don't even watch them anymore because I just find them irritating. You have all these people who just sit there and basically cry about it and, and say, oh, we're the victims. And it's a case of journalists and let's not forget these people are just journalists overstating their own importance. And yet they have become important because of the power of the media. And it shouldn't be that way. Journalists shouldn't be the story. But they have allowed themselves to become the story because of their vanity. So summed up, absolutely Trump should be held to account for controversial things he says. Absolutely. Otherwise you would have a dictatorship. But by the same token, the media has to be held to account because they are influential. People listen to this. People do form the views on what big networks say. That is extremely important. So I'm not saying don't criticize Trump. I'm saying be accurate when you cast these reports. You know, I'm looking forward to CNN's retraction. This is the thing. They will, you know, let's say, and that's actually a point that Trump made about the retractions. They don't care. It's the same in the UK. When tabloids get it wrong, they will apologise, but it will be in small letters on page 30. Not good enough. It should be on the front page. If you slander someone or smear someone's reputation, either through a network or on the front page of a newspaper, the recension should be on exactly the same level as the initial mistake. It should be balanced. So CNN should say, we got it wrong. We apologise to Nancy Sinatra for misinterpreting her position. They won't do it because they hardly ever do. So these issues are very important. Let me know your thoughts.